Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to Compass Games Live, episode 45. My name is John Kranz. It's a pleasure to be with you again. And you'll probably see I have some special guests, little furry friends underneath here that are going to be opening and closing the door on me, probably. But it's a and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, of course, I'm excited because tonight we have yet another designer interview, which means you're not stuck with me the whole time, which is a thumbs up from everybody, I'm sure. So we're going to be welcoming special guest Scott Librant today, and we're going to be talking about, uh, we'll mention you know a few designs, but we're going to focus on uh, a recent release, which is an Attrition of Souls, which uh, just recently shipped not too long ago. In the last month, month and a half, we shipped it out. So we're really excited to have Scott here to talk about this uh, new release, uh, and we're really happy to have him uh, here with us tonight. So for to start again for episode number 45, what I'd like to do is quickly give you an overview of, of the latest news with Compass Games before we get into our interview. So let's start by taking a quick look uh, at our home page, which we have here. And uh, just a reminder, we try to update the homepage when we have schedule changes, and we did have a schedule uh, change announced just recently. Matter of fact, I updated it today. So just real quickly, we have our newsletter, which I'll talk about in a moment. Please make sure you subscribe. It's in that big yellow bright box off in the left margin side panel. And then if you ever need to reach out to me for feedback, suggestions, or questions that I can use in our town hall meetings with Bill Thomas, you want to use that little talk to us uh, circled link where you can see me waving there in the bottom right corner. But as far as the schedule goes, let me provide you a quick update on that. So let's sort of uh, focus in on the home page. So uh, first of all, recent releases, uh, we have the Conquistador. So that just shipped as of uh, last week. Folks started receiving the game. So we're very happy to, to see that happening. And as mentioned, Attrition of Souls is a very recent release as well. That, that was the one just before the Conquistadors. So the big news is we're starting to get some uh, pipeline developments from Bill Thomas as far as what designs we're going to be seeing uh, after the new year. Of course, there's going to be a lot of titles released, I expect, in Q1 of 2021. It's just a matter of Bill deciding what those titles are going to be, and he's going to be making some decisions pretty soon, perhaps for our town hall meeting scheduled a week from today on Thursday, the 10th of December. But if you notice here, we have uh, we do announce for January, we do know what our next two releases will be, and that's for January. First, we have Devil Boats, the, that's PT Boats in the Solomons. That uh, uh, was also a very popular Kickstarter. It did very well on Kickstarter, even though we have every game on pre-order. It did very well on Kickstarter as well. And then we have uh, Coalition. This is a game, Coalition is a strategic level Napoleonic Wars game that could be played in a single sitting. So um, that's also one uh, that can be still pre-ordered. Uh, but again, both these titles are going to be out relatively quickly in uh, January. So just a moment on the newsletter, which I mentioned earlier. So again, uh, if you receive the newsletter, I'm just basically, uh, I've clicked on the newsletter just to go to the browser view so you can see it a little bit better. But again, uh, this was went out this morning. You can see here uh, the big news is our new release of the Conquistadors by John Southard. So that has now shipped as of last week. Uh, we then provide uh, news, another update, which is that Stellar Horizons is back in stock. So no, a few folks were asking me, uh, you know, is, are we gonna have the game available before the holiday season, possible gift giving, etc. And yes, uh, the game is now shipping immediately if you order it today. It ships out immediately, so we're happy to have Stella Horizons back in stock. Uh, we do have a Kickstarter that is presently in progress. So again, we announced that for Indian Ocean Region is on Kickstarter. And then scrolling through, again, the newsletter, we try to announce uh, all new developments. So in the newsletter, you can see here, we do announce those two upcoming releases in January. I expect there might be a third release in January as well, just to let you know. But again, those decisions are going to be coming a bit later. But we do definitely have a, a confirmation that Devil Boats and Coalition will be the first two releases of January. Then again, as always, we've got our holiday catalog sale going on till the end of January with a link to all the games that we have available that we did through our pre-order Palooza. I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about our, our official launch. Uh, we have our own Discord server for Compass Games. So we, ha we have a new online presence uh, for Compass to reach out to our community and to help other community members get together and do gaming. So I'll be talking a little bit about our new uh, 
channel, our new presence on Discord. And also a reminder, it's a great way to connect, especially on your mobile phone device. We have uh, this special Linktree uh, partnership we're doing so we can provide the latest news uh, on your phone so you can easily connect to Compass on all our various online venues. And we also provide the latest news as well. Uh, and then, of course, we always talk about what uh, videos, what broadcasts we're going to be doing. And here we are right now. We're doing this uh, live right now with Scott Librand, and we'll be in introducing him here in a moment. And then we have the recording, our last town hall, which was a few weeks ago with Bill Thomas, episode 11. We've got that there, so you can watch that as well. So just to, uh, just to give you some updates regarding new releases, uh, the Conquistadors, I've, we've updated the product page. Uh, as of today, there was a wonderful, fantastic uh, unboxing video done by Stuka Joe, and that's this first video here you can now get access to from the product page. We also pushed it out on our social media sites, but if you go to the Conquistadors product page, you'll now see this new unboxing. Highly recommended again from Stuka Joe. Please definitely uh, do check it out. Uh, again, Indian Ocean region, as I mentioned in the newsletter, it's going to be ending in two days. So we're down to 45 hours and we've got a great amount of backers already because uh, a lot of people have pre-ordered it as well. So thank you for your pledge. And again, we've got about two days left to get in your um, your uh, pre or your pledge, Kickstarter pledge for Indian Ocean Region. And just a reminder, if you did order Indian Ocean Region or pre-ordered it, you don't have to worry about Kickstarter at all. It's just another marketing vehicle. It's another way for us to get the message out about upcoming releases. So if you do have a pre-order in on Indian Ocean Region, you're all set. There's nothing you have to do. But I do want to mention as you scroll through this page, it does provide some additional information that's not on our own product page on compassgames.com. But also uh, definitely want to call out that we have the uh, rules booklet. So if you want to check out the rules now uh, for Indian Ocean Region, you can see here we've got a little 3D uh, snapshot here. You can go ahead and check out the full rules, and that will take you uh, to a page right here where you can flip through uh, the rules booklet online. We have other rule booklets online using this type of a viewer, and it's a little bit hidden, so I'll mention it now. Up in the upper left-hand corner, there's a little download arrow. A lot of people say, why don't you offer PDF downloads in this viewer? And we actually do. It's just that the uh, service really hides that download link. You have to really look for it in the upper left-hand corner. But again, we're happy to pro provide you regular downloads, PDFs, or via this viewer. And again, the rules look real good. We got some favorable comments coming in from people really excited about Indian Ocean regions. Very uh, good illustrations throughout. Definitely worth checking out if you haven't had a chance to check it out already. I do also want to mention our link tree. So link tree is that uh, is that uh, new link I told you about that really works well for smartphones. So I'm right now I'm in a iPhone plus view. If I switch to iPad Pro, you can see the view changes quite a bit. But if I go back to say like an iPhone six, seven, eight plus, you can see here we have these uh, various links here that are available. I've got the link for tonight's live uh, broadcast we're doing right now. We we can just push out the latest news on the you know to your phones basically. All you have to do is bookmark that link that link tree link for Compass Games, and you'll see uh, all the latest news here. Conquistadors now shipping is on there. All the different ways to connect with us. Also, we have this new join the Compass Discord channel. So that's something I just want to show to you here briefly. We just launched it a few days ago and uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with discord channel so it's very popular special for especially for play by email games and if I switch now to our channel uh, we have a lot of different folders or topics you can pick from I'll go to full screen mode just so you can see it a little bit better but uh, we start at the very top with a welcome. We welcome our new members that are coming in here. Uh, we're at about 168 new members uh, on our discord channel. We always have our announcements that are taking place here, so you can scroll through and see all the latest announcements we have. Uh, for example, we did a bar love uh, replay, a live uh, playthrough using Vassal, but also taking place here on the Discord channel. So I have a screenshot here, uh, which here we have it right here. This was the from last night. Uh, this was our game designer Chris Fawcett for bar love did a live playthrough. Uh, using Vassal, but here what happened here was we used Discord's uh, video service. So we're actually seeing all this through Discord and off to the right sidebar are some of the people that were part of the, uh, who, who stopped by 
to watch the playthrough. And I'm actually in there, I think, second from the bottom. I stepped in uh, just to watch how it how it uh, went. So it was uh, really fun. And I really want to thank Chris Fawcett for being the first designer to host something on the our new Discord channel as far as a playthrough. Um, just to let you know, uh, we have a direct connection to designers, many designers. So we call it our designer plots. It might be hard to see on screen here, but we have Ty Bamba, Dan Bullock, John Butterfield, Gilbert Collins, Ian B. Cooper, Christopher Davis, Chris Fawcett, Hugh O'Donnell, Gregory Smith, Jonathan Southard, Adam Starkweather, Chris Van Buren, Mike Wilner, and we hope to have a host of others. So this is your way to basically, if I click on, um, say, Chris Fawcett, it will go directly to his channel and you can communicate directly with Chris or I can go to Chris Van Buren. Uh, also, for every channel, we list what games they've done. So I have links for all the games at the very top that they've done as a designer. So you can get an idea of uh, what games they've done and, and including any past interviews. So definitely want you to check out the Discord channel. There's a lot of topics in here. We have a lot of fun too. We have things where you can share pictures of, of your uh, pets. Uh, so we've got people sharing photos, you know, just to have fun. We've got pet photos in here just to get to know everybody better. Uh, we've got uh, uh, game arrivals. So we've got some games that are arriving like Conquistador. Somebody posted here. Uh, Steve Carey posted out of California. He got Conquistadors. We had a nice selfie with Blitz by Drew. Uh, so you can see here, we're just trying to have a lot of fun with the channel. Uh, and there's just a lot of different things you're going to find on here. A lot of, I hope you'll, you'll consider a lot of uh, interesting topics uh, are provided on our Discord channel. So again, we've covered a lot uh, for sure. Uh, so what I'd also like to mention real quickly is we've got some games that have gone through the pipeline that are now at the printers. So I want to give you a quick update uh, on the update for which games are at the printer. So some of these you know about already, for example, Imperial Tide by Gregory M. Smith. Yes, that's another World War I strategic game that's been at the printers for some time, just to let you know that Imperial Tide is at the printers. We also have... Um, War for America, which was our last town, our last Compass Games Live that we did with Gilbert Collins. A War for America is now at the printers as well. Uh, Russian Campaign, that's the 1974 original edition of John Edwards' game, the Jetco release edition. That is also now at the printers. And this week we submitted NATO Designer Sign Signature Edition by Bruce Maxwell. So that's based on the original Victory Games NATO, but it's really changed quite a lot due to the order of battle research. Uh, there's more scenarios, different order of battle, uh, really a lot of refined rules, really a nice deluxe package from Bruce Maxwell, really impressive package overall. We'll have Bruce back on for a designer interview uh, now that NATO's going to the printers uh, as of this week. So we're really excited about um, all these games uh, going to the printers. So we're making a lot of progress on games. One thing I want to share as we get ready to uh, introduce our special guest is want to show you here quickly uh, just some of the games uh, that he's done, just to make you aware of them. So Colonialism, we've done some Euro games at Compass, and Colonialism is a very interesting one. Uh, this is one that Scott Librant has done. He actually had an earlier edition that was done through a, a previous publisher. So this was a newer edition with just uh, some modest changes. I think we added maybe two cards, or there were some very minor enhancements made to it. So I don't know if you're aware of Colonialism, so I'll be looking forward to talking to Scott tonight a little bit about colonialism after we do some brief introductions and discussions with him. And then for a, an attrition of souls, uh, and here again, I, I should go back. Uh, I got lots to show you guys tonight. So uh, if I go back to the Discord channel, what we do is we do a featured game. And since we have here Attrition of Souls with Scott Librand tonight, we made that our featured game right out of the gate on our Discord channel. So what we did there was we provided links to a designer interview he did with the player's aid. We have these videos, which you can now find as well on the product page. Uh, so a lot of videos here, as you can see, about four or five, including a replay uh, after action report that was posted over on Reddit site. So we basically armed everybody as best we can over on um, our Discord channel, all about uh, an att uh, attrition of souls so, uh, to get you ready for this. But also we've updated the product page here. So this is obviously the game we're gonna be talking about. Uh, we've got the back of the box information you can check out as well while we're talking tonight with Scott, although we'll be talking about the game. But again, 
what we've done is we've uh, added all these videos as of today. So we want you to be able to find these videos on the product page as well. So if you check out the product page, I definitely encourage you to check out these three videos uh, that we have available for you. Um, so after the after tonight's broadcast, please uh, do check it out. Maybe you'll order the game if you don't have the game already. So with that and without much further ado, let's go ahead and please welcome our special guest tonight, which is Scott Library. How you doing, Scott? Hey, how's it going? It's great to have you here. I really appreciate you joining us for tonight. So like I said, we have a lot to cover. I want to focus on an attrition of souls, as I mentioned, but uh, let's do some introductions first. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about where uh, you're joining us from tonight. Uh, oh, uh, if you want to um, share anything about what you do uh, during the day. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, balmy, lovey, oh, lovely. I can't um, hear you. There you are. Oh, okay. all right. <laughs> uh, balmy, lovely Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So that's where I'm coming from. Uh, day job is uh, export compliance. I ship paint around the world. It's pretty horrifically boring, and that's the last I'll say on that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, good uh, to be it's here. All right. It sounds. Uh, hey, it's uh, it's it's great that you got some. Yeah, a pleasure to have you here. And then I always like to ask designers, what was your first um, game that you played, or how was your introduction to the hobby? Um. You know, when I was younger, I kind of, you know, obviously there was kind of risk. And when I was growing up, uh, Hero Quest was out there. And I was always really interested in these games. I never really found any friends who want to play them with me. But then around high school age, like um, I met a couple friends in high school that were kind of into war games. Like um, my one friend, his older brothers were into war games. And I played way too much uh, We the People or uh, Victory in the Pacific, War at Sea, um, those kind of games. Kind of not yeah. heavier war games, but, you know, modest level, just kind of fun ones. Um, definitely tried to get a few Russian campaigns in. I don't think we ever finished that one. But, uh, yeah, so I kind of uh, got into war games first and then gradually got more into Euro games in college. And that's kind of my background. That's not, did you have a favorite game like when you were growing up? Was there a favorite game you had that you liked to look forward to play? Can you remember at all? Ah, uh, like I said, way too much uh, victory in the Pacific, and I, I oh, always okay. got stuck. I always got stuck with the Japanese, and I could never quite win. I mean, I, I, I pulled off a few victories, but uh, it was a shocker when I learned that you know apparently there's still tournaments for that game, and apparently the uh, Japanese are favored in that game. I'm like, what? I swear I only won like a half dozen times. <laughs> Somebody had to favor them, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I have to do a plug. I have to do a plug since you mentioned Victory in the Pacific because one of the projects we're working on right now, we're making good progress on, is uh, John uh, Edwards' uh, Victory at Sea. It's it's really more based on War at Sea. I know that's not the Pacific. It's the uh, other uh, version there, you know, with mm -hmm. the Brits and all. But uh, if you like rolling dice and you like Victory, if you like Victory in the Pacific then you'll probably be happy with victory at sea too. So be right up your alley, I'm sure. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> so how did you decide to go from a gamer to a designer? Did you jump full throttle in or were you play testing for a while or doing reviews or what made you scratch that itch that said, you know what, I'm going to start designing games. So I, I always kind of, dabbled with designing games. I mean, I would play around with like creating my own rules for Axis and Allies and that kind of, you know, silliness and what have you. But um, kind of late in college, I had an idea for a um, essentially a um, tile placement war game that was called uh, mm -hmm. DEFCON 1. And I was really um, kind of adamant that I wanted this, the only mechanic, the only luck, random chance mechanic to be what tiles you drew. Yeah. And I, I could never quite get it right. And honestly, um, Attrition of Souls is kind of me coming back to that, making peace with adding dice and other random yeah. chance elements and kind of re, you know, re-envisioning, recreating that idea. But yeah, DEF CON was the first thing I worked on. And then Colonialism, um, I designed during grad school. And that was the first one I uh, got published. Can you can you fact check for me what changed from the original edition to the Compass edition of Colonialism? I thought maybe there was a card or two, but I couldn't I couldn't recall exactly. There were some very minor modifications, I think, to your Colonialism Colonialism uh, game. So we clarified a couple of the base cards. Um, we nerfed 
Um, the military campaign card. Uh, we changed the consolidated holdings card. Um, and then we added one minor little expansion pack where essentially um, players can trade in resources they collect for uh, bonuses that will follow them throughout the game. So kind of a cost-benefit analysis thing. But yeah, it, it wasn't... It wasn't a ton. I was pretty happy with how the first edition was, just minor little yeah. tweaks. What got you interested in grad uh, I think you said it was grad school that you did colonialism. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. your first, yeah. What was it that uh, piqued your interest to do that topic uh, for your uh, Euro game? Curious about, curious about that. Well, I... <laughs> I mean, it, it's more so with me as a designer, um, you know, I, I get these mechanics and I just kind of mm -hmm. want to know, I, I think, where the heck could this work? Like, how could I make this fit? Because you certainly don't want your theme to be slapped on. Like, your theme has to just kind of fit organically with these mechanics. I had these card play mechanics that were really cutthroat, really... You know, I, I like Euro games, but I don't like yeah. those feel-good Euro games. I like the nasty, get-at-your-opponent kind of Euro games. And, you know, 18th and early 19th century uh, colonialism, there's nothing pretty about that. It was, was all the say, great you powers. Shy. You weren't shy to go straight to the nastiness there. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, I mean, I know on, like, some sites, I think maybe, I don't know, I don't want to call out any site names, but, uh, you know, there's people that will, you know, obviously take offense. How could you make this a game? Or, you know, I come across that a lot for different games. I mean, I, mean, I, could, I could distill it down to any war game could offend somebody to be honest because yeah unfortunately it's war and bad things are happening but uh yeah you didn't you didn't hold any punches there you went right for the right for the theme and uh and uh, i sort of say props to you for just going for it and uh we're happy to support it and and you know there's always insights to take out of the game and uh you know i think our hope is to learn from history and Absolutely. there's some some nasty there's always some very nasty parts to history uh, for History, sure. History, so, uh, unfortunately, is filled with nastiness, and hopefully we make, you know, the artwork and kind of the theme of colonialism gritty enough that we're not sugarcoating kind of everything that happened. Well, that's, and that's where I would flip the script a little bit. While well, people might say, oh, you know, picking a topic like that, people were giving you props online saying, this is a really dark, them them thematically dark, you know, like you said, gritty, I'll steal your words. This is a really gritty, dark topic you're doing here. But people were sort of like saying this hey it's a fascinating it is a fascinating look at history uh with the mechanics and what's happening and um you know so props to you again for doing that i mean uh you, well, you, you didn't do it wasn't candy land right it wasn't like candy <laughs> land somewhere you didn't go for that but what you said was interesting i read an article uh it was uh, i think it was uh, a well published uh with a big readership and they talked about what's the difference between a euro game designer and a say a war game designer a conflict simulation designer and what it talked about was there's a two very different approaches to doing a, a design the euro gamer and i think you sort of mentioned this so i'll, I'll ask you this in terms of attrition of souls because we're going to segue to that game now is uh, a euro gamer is going to think about game mechanics first and foremost that comes first whatever that topic is that's always going to be secondary it's going to be what fits the top the the game mechanic the best whereas a conflict simulation designer is i want to do something on the eastern front i'm really interested in this battle i've researched i've got the order of battle it's a very specific now i've got to figure out how do i model this what i want my focus of design to be so tell us please where do you fall in that spectrum from starting with the mechanics and that's your base, or do you start with the topic and find the mechanics to fit the topic? Well, being a dirty Euro gamer at heart, um, you know, those mechanics are my baby. I, you know, I come up with the mechanics first. There's a couple cool nifty mechanics I have. And I find a theme that, uh, you know, fits it. But, you know, I, I really, I don't think in any of my published titles, I've ever slapped on a theme. You know, I try to find a theme that truly just enhances the mechanics I have. And, you know, with Attrition of Souls, I, I, I hope I achieve that. You know, I mean, there is, you know, it creates both gridlock and also this tense atmosphere where, you know, the dice could determine a breakthrough. You know, this could be the big push. Because, I mean, isn't that what all the powers were after with every offensive? This was the one that was going to break through and make, you know, you know, in Berlin by Christmas. So, right. I, you know, I, I hope that all those mechanics 
lend themselves to the World War I atmosphere. I mean, I certainly feel they do, or I wouldn't have applied that theme. Okay, so we're, we're going to start then. Let's, let's, let's focus in here then. So uh, I don't know how many people here have your game already. So if somebody has it, I'm going to ask them on live to give me a plus one if they have the game already. But for those that don't have this game, since we talk about starting with mechanics first, please share with everyone, what were the key mechanics you came up with that ended up going to this World War I strategic game? What were those mechanics you wanted to use? Well, I mean, again, at its heart, it's from an older design where I really wanted a tile draw mechanic where you draw the units you have every turn and then you use them to the best of your abilities. I mean, I, I really don't like war games or Ameritrash games, if you want to get away from war games, where you really got to think about how to use X amount of production points. You know, that just right. grinds personally, yep. my, my preference. It takes, that, the, it takes that feel away, I think. It, it, it takes away from the ambiance of what you're trying to recreate, right? That it, situational exactly. drama and that it, theme. Exactly. And I mean, war games, actually, war games do that well. War games rarely have that. They usually have order of battle charts where, you know, these units will appear at this time. Well, you know, this game doesn't have that, but has that random, you know, one turn, you might draw a Turkish heavy army, but you might have really needed to have a few more Germans to stabilize the Western Front. Or maybe, you know, in 1915, like the the Entente, they draw more Italians than they were expecting. You know, do they bring the Italians early, in earlier than historically, you know, expected? You know, there's kind of those decisions that you got to face based on your tile draw. And then the other mechanic I'm kind of proud of is I wanted kind of an attrition warfare mechanic. So what I did is I had the battle dice that the attacker, the active player rolls every turn. Those are the same dice that the defender uses to allocate mm. hits. So really, you can never have lucky dice. I hate it when you know one side rolls yeah. perfectly and the other side rolls horribly. Both sides are using the same dice. The only thing is, is you have kind of that um, combined arms thing where different units hit on different dice. How did you come so up you with know, that idea? Was that an idea from another game about the dice being used the same for both sides? Or can you recall I, how you got that idea? I can't. You know, honestly, I come up with some of the best mechanics either in the shower or walking the dog. So I, I guess one of well, those our, ne our next interview will be with you in the shower when we talk about your <laughs> next I don't think anyone ideas, watched right? that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, we'll blow up the audience, right? We'll go through the we'll go through the roof. So, okay. So, uh, uh, so might it's not a, have so any it's a <laughs> Yeah. So it's a chit draw. So the chit draw yeah, was yeah. The, the the key mechanic. Yeah. Um, how do you how do you uh, reflect? Yeah. So obviously, gosh, World War One strategic. I'm not like too stunned that uh, for attrition you decided on World War One as a topic. I think that sort of makes sense. So, but how do you capture the attrition aspect of? Uh, I'm not a well-read person on World War One. I. I know enough about it, I, you know, I guess. But it seems like this wearing down, it wasn't like be home, like you said, by winter, uh, before the leave falls, home before the leave falls. Uh, so so are you doing this grinding attritional? Is this, is this part of this experience of your game at all that you're going um, after? So, I mean, the other mechanic, I mean, there's many smaller mechanics I'm not mentioning, but uh, the other mechanic is there's only one round of combat at each turn. So, I mean, in order to make a decisive breakthrough, you figure you have three tile types, infantry, artillery, and aircraft, airplanes, and you figure that, you know, they hit on ones, twos, and threes. You actually got to have somewhat of an overwhelming force to create that kind of breakthrough and advance to the next um, yeah. segment of the map. So, uh, it's uh, it's a little bit hard to explain without actually having played the game, but you can also get, st especially mid and late games, certain fronts can stagnate, where if you don't have enough resources, yeah. it's hard to achieve that breakthrough, and you just There's have no that constant through. attrition. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah. you're just constantly feeding more pieces into the meat grinder, and you're trying to do that mental math of like, how many tiles, assuming you're not the one trying to make the breakthrough, how many tiles do I need to move here just to soak up hits to not let them have that decisive breakthrough? Or vice versa, how much do I have to throw in to really ensure that I'm going to knock them out and be able to advance towards their capital? 
How, how was it for you f during the design process of this game? Uh, you know, this isn't colonialism. It's, it's a bit different here. Uh, although you said it was the same mechanic you used earlier for something else. How was the whole development playtesting experience for you? Was there anything you decided to change later or something like an aha moment? Was there any aspect that was particularly challenging or anything that just stands out in your mind about your design effort for Attrition of Souls? So um, balancing the powers was um, tricky. Um, the Entente come into this um, with a much heavier um, industrial capacity. They bring more units onto the board each turn. And the central powers counter that with being a little bit more efficient. They have a better balance of units, whereas the Entente are more infantry heavy. Um, the Germans in particular are the powerhouse of the game where they have this really well-rounded army that can usually you know decisively achieve a breakthrough on one front but you know kind of balancing I, I, you know getting the two sides to kind of play differently that um that was a bit of a challenge you know with obviously with most euro games you're just you know each player you have blue player green player red player and you know turn order is the only thing that's you know different between them here you got to create two sides and kind of tell a story. I wouldn't want the central powers to play like the Entente or vice versa. So in that sense, that was a little bit difficult with play testing. Also, it, it, we did this kind of thing where I had a bunch of Chrome. We kind of peeled it back, took the raw game and made it a base game. And then we took all that little fun Chrome stuff and put it as optional rules that, you know, players can kind of right. choose what they want to play with. And I think that works better for learning the game. You know, the first time around, it says right in the rule books, you know, consider playing just the base game to start off. And then you can add as, you know, you become ready. And hopefully, you know, bring a different experience. I think that's the accessibility of the game. So if I could just share for a moment back on your product page, uh, as I mentioned, I want to scroll down to the third and last video that people can check out. Barebones Wargaming did a, a, a replay of I think it was a later turn in 1914, and he did talk about uh, he did talk about first he had played it four or five times already. He mentioned at the intro, so the game plays very quickly, which is great. You know, it, it's a game that uh, very accessible uh, with good variability. But he mentioned he did mention up front. He's only done the basic game so far several times. Uh, I think he did experiment with some optional rules, but he says the optional rules can really have an effect. Or can you provide uh, can you provide more flavor around what you have for optional rules? Because it looks like he does mention there's there's the, one thing he found attractive about your game is it's uh, you do have a, a sort of a cafeteria style of optional rules to choose from, and I'm really interested if you can sort of and again I I, I would point out to our viewers please check out this bare bones wargaming replay it's a single turn lasts about 40 minutes but he covers you know the the general game overall which is great gives the high level uh, picture of it but he does he does mention the optional rules quite a bit so i was hoping you could expand upon the optional rules a little bit more yeah i mean there's a lot of uh different optional rules um probably um the biggest one i would say is there's one um or the one that'll cause the most change that i was most leery about but we ultimately went with it and it's a lot of fun even if it's a little unbalancing is uh the variable uh power entry so as the game's structured now um in the base game um you know powers enter they can enter a half a year earlier than they did historically that's the earliest they could possibly enter and uh, with the variable um, entry, I mean, you can get the U.S. entering the war in 1915. You can get, you know, there, there's just all kinds of weirdness that can happen. And that's kind of a fun one. I, I kind of like playing that way. Um, we got different ones that involve units. You know, we get, you can't have a World War I game without a few tank tokens. I mean, that just wouldn't be fun. Um, <laughs> there you go. Put in the tanks. <laughs> um, same thing with the stormtroopers. Need a few yep. stormtroopers, not the okay. white ones and helmets, but you know, pickle hob <laughs> ones. Else, yes. <laughs> got you. We're sticking with World War One here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, we got some um, a little bit that adds more of a defensive element to the game. We got um, air reserves where you can kind of use your airplanes, which are usually your offensive striking unit you can kind of keep them in reserve and mobilize them when you're the not the active player you keep them in what we call an airdrome 
um, or aerodrome. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Yeah, but yeah. and then as when you're the defensive player, you can essentially mobilize them quick in battles at your choosing. It kind of gives you this more defensive um, ability. And then we also added a little bit of fog of war. We added a couple decoy tokens and rules for playing with your pieces, kind of upside down. Um, oh, nice. That that's going to take a you know a little bit more. That's going to add to the yeah. gameplay time. But uh, you know, I, it could definitely you know not knowing how your opponent is truly positioned, especially for the central powers on that opening turn. That's uh, that's tricky. That adds a whole new element. And you mentioned limited intelligence in that bare bones wargaming replay video that I just talked about. He mentions that solitaire playability is quite good. He he really likes the solitaire aspects. He's actually just been playing at solitaire, and uh, but he says he had some tips in the video, uh, how, just homemade tips that he did that added to the solitaire experience. Only reason I mentioned that is just to let people know. Every we always like to mention. Every game we talk about, you know, how's the solitaire playability? That's always going to be asked about. So I'll let you comment on the solitaire playability yourself. I just want to reference that video again. I mean, I, I think it's quite high. Just with the tile draw mechanic, you know, you're playing as a central powers. Ooh, these are my tiles. How do I best use them? You don't know what you're going to draw on your Entente turn to counter that. You know, you draw those tiles. Oh, how do I use them? Not knowing what the central powers are going to draw next turn. You know, unlike having a chart when you know when every unit's going to arrive on the battlefield, just not knowing what you're going to draw that next turn. You know, I, I think that really adds to the solo play testing. And I played this quite a oh, bit. I, I mean, yeah, I bet yeah. you did. Yeah, so, I mean, it plays quickly, relatively, but it's nice. It's got that base game to it where you can really have a nice, quick, you know, solo play experience if you want to go solo. Uh, but then you've got those optional rules and even the limited intelligence you're adding. And, and uh, yeah, that's great. So you're adding flavor as it goes. I think that's uh, I think that's fantastic. So uh, since we have so many World War One games at Compass, somebody said on one of our social uh, <laughs> accounts, they said uh, we've cornered the World War One market, at least a strategic World War One market with so many games. So what I wanted to ask you is, did you draw inspiration from any past published games or designs, whether they're World War One or not? I'm just curious, were there any games that you would say, oh, yeah, there were some mechanics or the feel of the game. This one's sort of what I was thinking about uh, at all. I was curious about that. Um, you know, yeah, there was a little bit, not so much... Um... I'm not sure, if, not so much mechanically, but in terms of flavor, and I'm mm -hmm. only looking at the floor because I got sitting next to me. It's the first World War. It's by Phalanx Games, and it's um, oh, Ted Racier. Yeah. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go here. Show it. We, we, what's yeah, not this guy here. Um, I haven't played it. Oops, wrong side. Yep, I haven't perfect. played it go. in yep, years, we can see that but... Well. Yep. But, um, you know, just that it, it has that kind of linear paths and this kind of element of breaking through. And there were things I didn't like about the game that much. You know, I, you know, I didn't like it had this weird ending style where if you achieved a breakthrough, you rolled a die. And if the die came up a certain die face, you know, you just won or lost. And there was stuff like that that I wasn't yeah, so you just keen mentioned on, earlier. But... You just mentioned earlier about how you have the same die for both sides. You don't want that to happen, like one roll to sort of go off to the wayside. So I can see that sort of relates back to what you said earlier about how you've got the dice mechanics working in your design. I, I do not. I do not like dice. Um, I do not <laughs> like dice. I don't like dice. You got something well, I mean, personal against dice, huh? Yes. Okay, there or maybe go. they have something personal against me. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, you know, I mean, you want your decisions to be meaningful and, you know, yep. impactful where, you know, if you made the smart decision, you don't want the dice to foil that. And, you know, I, I don't want to do that to people who play my designs, that they roll a fistful of dice and the dice, you know, just mess them up. And I can't say that that is never going to happen in Attrition of Souls. I mean, sometimes it's a di their dice are involved. They can mess. Trust me, dice have affected yep. me. But yeah, I, I think I think it minimizes the role of the dice in gotcha. the luck. Yeah, yeah. And you're putting the emphasis on player decisions and uh, obviously that uh, the the draw system you've got mm -hmm. going on. Tile so. draw is a random luck me yep. mechanic for sure. All right, well, let's do this. Let's, uh, we've got some uh, interest here we've generated, so I'm going to throw some comments at you. Maybe it might be a question here or two. So we've got uh, Gregory Smith does a lot of solitaire designs for Compass. 
And he says, I like this guy already. He thinks like me. So, <laughs> and just to let you know, I know you have a small screen. I think you're using your phone. So I'm going to read off some of these comments for yeah. you so you can hear what people are. You might not be able to see it on your screen. But yeah, Gregory Smith is basically giving you kudos. Also, uh, Dennis thanks, on Gregory. YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Greg, for that. That's always uh, great for designers to hear from another designer. So Dennis Canning's over joining us on YouTube tonight. He says, excellent game regarding oh, Trishina Souls. Uh, Mo, who did, Mo, Maurice Fitzgerald, who's sort of my neighbor just down the street here somewhere. Uh, he does his own Mo's Game Table video YouTube channels and everything else. And he says, uh, uh, he made a long comment. I'll go ahead and read it here so you can hear it. So it's an Attrition of Souls. is really a fun game. Easy to play, has extra optional rules to customize the game the way you want, and solos very well thanks to the random tile draw. Mo Ma Ma could have done my interview with you like in 15 <laughs> seconds. We'd be done. That was my whole interview was that statement. <laughs> I could already be having a beer right now. We'd be doing a micro. I, I, I could have Mo on. We can do micro interviews at Compass. We'll have a designer on for 30 <laughs> seconds, and then you'll be gone. Okay? We'll, we'll do that. Uh, and then that's Mo that's said, the new segment. <laughs> Mo just closes saying it's a lot of fun, the game, and one to definitely pick up. Uh, Keith talks about your design. Uh, Keith Powell joins us on Facebook. He talks about your design approach to games. He says it's like writing either the music or the lyrics first. So it's like one or the yeah. other, like which way you're coming at, sort of the artistic uh, uh, vein there. Now I'm trying uh, to think in that analogy, which I do first, based on the analogy. Yeah, think, of, think about yeah. that. So, yeah, is it the lyrics or uh, I, maybe the lyrics are the mechanics? I don't know. The lyrics could, sounds like that's the story you're telling. That could be the topic you're picking. So hmm. we're going to bring, have to bring I'm gonna have in to here. noodle that over. Yeah. That's a, that's a very... That's, a very profound statement from Keith. It has us pausing, thinking Almost through it. Almost philosophical. <laughs> it is. It's very philosophical. <laughs> we have a very philosophical group here, by the way. I just wanted to advise you on that. Um, and then your comments about the dice. Uh, Patchwork Pictures joining us on YouTube channel says, that's interesting. Interesting. He, said, he says, also, I hate what he calls swingy dice. Mm -hmm. Dice that can really mm -hmm. take it to extremes. So uh, definitely there. And Brian warns you on Facebook, don't do chit draw in the shower. So if <laughs> your design ideas, you don't want to do the, especially if you drop it on the floor, we don't want you to bend over and all that fun stuff. That, so. that this is true. Does also make for soggy chits. <laughs> soggy chits. Yeah, that would be, that's a good theme though for World War One for the, for the, you know, the winter season, the, the mud effects, you know, we could maybe apply it that way. Uh, Sal Maldonado is joining us on YouTube and he says uh, he's really excited to see these young designers Compass is uh, working with, how impressive it is. So I think he's uh Talking about you, I know we've had Christopher Davis on, Dan Bullock has been on, we've had some people. Basically, it doesn't look like, you don't look like me, like you're going to kick the bucket tomorrow is, is what they're basically saying. Oh. So you're, and, uh, much more. Thank you, I'm flattered. Too. There you go. So, uh, And then Dennis here says, it's good that Compass finally has a World War One strategic game. You're, you know, Dennis is right. We need to do more World War One strategic games. We've only got about three or four uh, already, so we need to do more. He's joking, of course, so uh, that's why you get that. Um, Greg says, uh, Gregory Smith, our designer, says that he make, you make a good point, great point about the 6-1 dice combo that just destroys you in, a, in some games. And then he mentions... Path of Glories comes to mind. I, I, and I know Greg has Path of Glory in his head because his Imperial Tide game, I think, is, is probably a closer resemblance to Path of Glory in terms of the scope of the game of how, how he... That's what we love at Compass is every... We love supporting you as a designer of all the different designer approaches. And there are a lot of different design approaches. World War One Strategic, we're seeing that. The Lamps, we got the Lamps game, we got yours, Greg's game coming out, on and on and on, all these World War One games. But every design is different. There's there's definitely different creativity going on with every game. So uh, so good comment there by Greg. Let's see what other comments we have here. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Lance, yeah, Lancer over on YouTube mentions uh, at least initially it's that uh, sort of illusion, illusionary home before the leaves fall feel to the campaign. You know, giving players 2020 insight as to the fact that it's inevitably going to be a long war. Uh, definitely definitely got that for sure. Right. Um, also, uh, I didn't mention this yet, but uh, for folks on social channels, I know I'll just mention this advertisement real quick. We have a group that started a MeWe uh, group for fans of Compass Games. So I actually just posted there today. I think the group just started today. It's just an alternative to Facebook if people want to have different venues. So uh, we're also 
going to support that fans page over on me we group uh, just to keep it going uh dennis agrees the game plays well solitaire dennis has the game he agrees with you that it solos very well mo chimes in saying yes especially with the random bag draw uh, for solo play that works out very well joe again another person here quite a few people got your game already and have solo played it apparently neat easy to play solo system so and patchwork hates dice like you do as well <laughs> and, don't, and, don't we all. <laughs> and people say so some of their people also say the dice hates them as well so you're not yeah. alone although sal says he loves his dice oh so sal well, loves his dice so we got i'm glad, glad got... the dice aren't persecuting sal but for the rest <laughs> of us poor souls <laughs> Exactly. So uh, one thing I want to ask you is you've done some designs now. So what people always like me, I think, to ask designers is, do you have anything in the works, anything you're looking at doing or anything you'd consider doing in the future? Are you doing anything actively right now? Just fill us in. What can we expect next? I, I have not been too active. The two things I would mention is you know, I, I would like to circle back to that DEF CON 1 idea if I can get my mind around it and kind of do the tile draw system with no dice, you know, kind of tile draw chess, if you will. But that's going to require a little bit more thought um, and a little bit more time on my hands. But the one game that I actually is pretty well finished and i'm kind of shopping around at the moment uh the current title is just the great fire of rome that could change um it's out with a couple publishers but it, it's it, it's a cooperative game it plays um i mean it could play any number but i would say mm -hmm. one to four is about the right amount and it's um you know most cooperative games all cooperative games i can think of are for the most part euro right, and this right. one is I'm not going to say it's a war game. That would be yeah, a okay. lie. I would just be pandering to the audience, but it is solidly a merit trash. Um, you take on the um, seven firefighting cohorts of Rome mm. and you're trying to fight against the great fire of, gosh, I hope I'm not screwing this up, 64 AD, the famous mm. fire that Nero supposedly fiddled during. Now you want me to, now you and, want me to go on Amazon and buy a book or download it on Kindle. <laughs> like I, I've never heard anybody talk about the fire in Rome. I, I missed that history day in class in, <laughs> in college, but this is a very interesting topic to me. Uh, I don't know why that... Uh, I don't know why the fire appeals to me, but maybe it's the Rome, maybe that it's tied to Rome. And you said 64 AD was 64 uh, AD, I believe. And if we I'm got some fact it, checkers here, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to check your facts in real time if here in the comments. The worst part is if I'm getting it wrong, my co-designer is going to be really upset because usually I've <laughs> all the other games I've published, I've designed alone, but this one I designed with uh, my friend, Gregory um, Aldrete, who formerly mm -hmm. worked in the UW system. He's a uh, Roman historian a professor and uh he you know he guided all the historical aspects i mean we we mm. tried to make the firefighting as accurate as possible you know the units you're working with are bucket brigades you know people throwing water on the fire but then you also got pickaxes tr uh, catapults oh. and water pumps and i wouldn't have known that pickaxes and catapults to were break used up the fire is that to yeah. break up yeah to break up they the they would just you know destroy the building that's on fire to make sure it didn't spread to the next one and we kind of got that in the mechanics too you know when you use them if you kind of score a hit you have to destroy a building tile just in order to put out a couple extra fires you know we kind of added that fun where the mechanics and theme kind of come together so I love it. Dennis on YouTube did a single emoji to sell your game. It's a little fire <laughs> emoji. <laughs> maybe, maybe we don't need best, a tile. I think that's the best marketing for the game. We did a full page ad just with the fire emoji that Dennis posted. That's all you need. Well, I can't nope, even say, nope. well, I can't say we're going to advertise it because like you said, it's out to various publishers. So, so, uh, but it sounds very enticing. I, we got a few comments about what you're talking about right now. Patchwork over on YouTube saying, "Do I get to build my palace afterward, or do my political enemies, <laughs> do my political enemies accuse me of burning it down while I make backfires?" <laughs> so. I mean, honestly, in the early design of that, we were considering whether there would be kind of this political element because the Roman elite would use fires and floods to kind of wash out the poor and kind of oh. re. Um, what would you? What do we call that nowadays? Where you make. Um, 
uh, I forget what the term is now, but they would essentially clear out the slums and steal them for their oh own gosh. purposes. So there were that, that thought had crossed my mind. <laughs> Patchwork asked, can you blame it on the Christians? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Nero tried his best. <laughs> uh but uh, yeah mike, no. mike mike see you've been fact checked see i told you i'm not kidding this audience is very <laughs> very sharp we have uh by the way it's uh have a uh, well over 75 people which is great ah, online right now cool, but uh cool. uh classical studies his son who's a classical studies major says it's 64 ad is about right so there you go got it so got thumbs it. up on that uh and then somebody said what about a game starting fires in rome instead of fighting <laughs> them <laughs> That could, be, near- that could be that add-on. Couldn't that be an add-on? Like actually starting the. F- I mean, then we could put it in California. You can you can use it present day and. Just Nero sneaking around, starting fires at oh, night. Well, speaking of Nero, speaking of Nero, we've got Operation Nero, Moscow, eighteen twelve. Somebody just suggested Operation Nero, Moscow, eighteen. There you go, Nero. Somebody's reading yeah. your mind. Yeah, uh, do you have fire insurance? Do you want to buy it? Is it <laughs> urban renewal, eminent domain, redevelopment? Um, what do we else we got here? It was, uh, here we go. Oh, a a gene- revitalization. Is that what it's yes, called? Yes, redevelop. Well, yeah, we could call it that. Oh, he said redevelopment. I'm not sure which the proper term would be. Maybe there's a little different. I bet it's a nuanced term, is my guess. But uh, also, James is chiming in on Facebook. Uh, James says it was July 18. 18- 64 AD when the oh. fires broke out, starting in the Circus Maximus. Okay, I yep, got to get a yep. book on this now. Well, hey, I have to we get a, do. I, the I Circus book. Maximus does start the Inferno. The Inferno token starts in the Circus <laughs> Maximus. So we even got that down. My, oh my co-designer gosh. wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> uh, here's a new title for your game. And uh, if Kempis can end up doing it, that'd be great. July 64 AD, things got hot in Rome. Things got hot in Rome. <laughs> But the fire emoji, I like that. <laughs> Things got hot in Rome, colon, 64 AD. <laughs> See, there you go. I think, I think, I, you are, know what? We, these guys are marketing geniuses here. But are, are, you sure you we, the... <laughs> are you sure we shouldn't just have the fire emoji take up the whole front of the box I, and inside yeah. it just 64? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that yeah, would yeah. sell really well. I think we've just helped sell your game to somebody who's going to yeah. pick it up. I, I give it a thumbs up, I, but I need to read a book about the history now of the fires in Rome. It's really got me. I, uh, I probably do. I probably do too. Thank goodness. I had somebody <laughs> else who knew the history. You've prob- yeah. You've got your friend that knows the history inside out. So you're off the hook probably already <laughs> for sure. I can so, just baby the mechanics. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. There was one great comment I didn't get to on. Uh, yeah, here we go. Aaron, I want to bring up Aaron's comment about an attrition of souls. I missed it. Uh, earlier so really nice comment he says he's really enjoyed playing the game solo he's played it about 12 times with different optional rules and he'll definitely revisit the game soon so a lot of variability just i mean just given the rules alone a lot of options to how to play it um and he says the production quality of the game the components mounted map the cards he wants to say uh, kudos on the production quality of the game that uh it's a really cool. a nice game. And somebody else mentions they're going to pick up the game tonight. So uh, oh, good. I think good. it was James saying he's got about five. Yeah, right here. James says he's got he's going to add it to his five other World War One games. He has already. <laughs> I don't four. think you have nearly enough. You need at least I think a three dozen. or four are from Compass. And no, I'm just kidding. No, there's a lot of World War One games out there for sure. Hey. And going back to the production value, I got to yeah. thank Compass for that. And going sure. back to the amazing artwork, uh, Bill Morgel did a great, phenomenal job. And I'd be I remiss think... if I didn't say what a just awesome job he did with the artwork. Yeah, Bill. Bill's here online, I think, tonight. So I want to give a shout out to Bill, who's joining us live tonight for the hey, great Bill. job. Great job he did. John Longshore says he sold on the game, so he's placing an order uh, for the game, Michael Kwan here says Rome is burning Nero and the fire that ended a dynasty by Anthony Barrett. Ah, we have a book recommendation. There is your that's book. What I, that's what I wanted to ask. I forgot to ask about a book recommendation. So everybody take notes. According to Michael, we want Rome is burning Nero and the fire that ended a dynasty. Okay, that's my book. All right, all right. To read right there. That's awesome. Uh, Some thanks, light Michael. reading. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. And Bill says thanks for the hat tip on everything. Oh, uh, Joe, you you earned it, Bill. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, no, this was fantastic. So I think everybody got to know, uh, everybody's got a chance to get to know you a little bit better tonight. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, talking with you. Uh, definitely want to mention colonialism uh, being a straight Euro game, but 
well, you, like you said, it's a dark, gritty topic, and people have said kudos to you on it's a really fascinating uh, game. Yeah, dark th thematic topic, but really a great game, and uh, it's still available from Compass as well. But Attrition of Souls, you can see uh, quite a few people, you know, I'm surprised actually how many people said, yeah, everybody's been playing it solitaire, and they really love the very, they really like how you went with those optional rules, it looks like. And and your approach, you oh. know, the mechanics and theme you went for. So a big thumbs up I'm, from I'm, everybody. I'm happy. I'm happy everyone's enjoying it. You really stoked my ego. And uh, yeah, thanks yeah. for having me on. I had a lot of fun. That's awesome. No, it was a pleasure to have you on here. And uh, best of luck with that. Uh, uh, what was the first game you mentioned, NORAD? Or what was the very first? Oh, uh, yeah. DEFCON 1 is so the current working title for essentially Attrition of Souls minus Dice. And that's good. If If... I ever get back around to it, that's going to take place um, during the Cold War and have uh, nuclear weapons involved. So, all right, you know, some cheery. I like my cheery topics. Oh, oh cheery topics. Fun. There we go. And, yeah. and we have folks that, well, when folks get to know a designer, they like to recommend titles and different uh, topics. Although I know you focus on the mechanics first. So, I'll, we'll probably see on here on the Constant World Forum, Discord, Facebook. Uh, Twitter, maybe we'll see some comments about what games they'd like you to consider doing because a lot of a lot of people are sold on your design approach. They like your style and they really like, you know, getting to know you through Attrition of Souls. They really like your design approach. So take a little bit of a respite. Like you said, you're resting a little bit right now, but not too long. And hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully we can work with you. Uh, you know, I'm confident we'll find we'll be working with you again, hopefully here in the near future. So thank you so well, much, Scott. I, for, uh, I would love us. to work with Compass again. And thanks again for having me. All right. Take care, Scott. It was a pleasure to have you on tonight. Take care. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Oh, it was great to have uh, Scott. Uh, I hope you enjoyed having Scott Librant on tonight for our Compass Games Live. So I hope you learned a lot about uh, an attrition of souls. So um, it's nice to see there are some videos that have been out there posted and they're now available on our product page. So we're very happy uh, to uh, have Scott on with us tonight. Game just was recently released. Like I said, just before the Conquistadors game was released. So we're really happy about that. I think somebody was asking earlier about, uh, was there a John Southard uh, video we did? And we did do, um, uh, we did have him on for Compass Games Live. I wanna say it was two or three episodes ago. I will have to double check and maybe I'll comment in the YouTube comments. Uh, with a link to where that John Southard interview is, but it was fairly recent. I think it was in the last two or three episodes of Compass Games Live that we had John Southard on. So I want to thank uh, everybody for the props for having Scott on. I hope again, I hope it was very insightful. We definitely learned about his design approach to games. I think, which I think was really helpful. And uh, just to let you know, what we're really excited about at at Compass is, you know, we've got so many games now going through to the printers, as I mentioned. So I mentioned those four titles. There's actually more titles that are with the printers. We've got uh, more titles coming in uh, to the warehouse, uh, I think in the next few days. I don't wanna steal Bill's, uh, Thomas's Thunder, but I think we're gonna have a really nice update for you all when we do our Compass Town Hall meeting uh, a week from tonight, uh, Thursday the 10th. I think we're gonna have a lot of updates coming from Bill, just about everything that's happening uh, with Compass, uh, things are looking, things have really are from my side looking really well. It's amazing. I'm still, still blown away by the job Bruce Maxwell did with NATO because I'm seeing the final rules and playbook, uh, that's done now and go, gone to the printers. And it's an amazing effort. Um, what he did with the game, uh, several steps up from the original victory games edition. I think it's just, it's going to be an amazing release. So a lot of exciting stuff going on. I'm going to hold the questions for tonight on other topics just because we'll do that during our town hall next week. Uh, but again, just a reminder, if you do have a uh, phone, uh, please check out our Linktree link that we have advertised now because it's the greatest, easiest way just to connect with us. Definitely please check out our Discord channel. For me personally, it's the quickest way to get something posted about Compass, what's going on with various projects and I do post sneak peeks. I've posted a few sneak peeks uh, around several games just in the past week. It takes me like 30 seconds to do, so it's very fast. Uh, so if you can join us on Discord and, and if you're new to Discord, um, I, I do wanna mention that we actually invested fairly heavily in our Discord channel. What we decided to do was we went with a, a tier two approach um, to the support uh, that you get out of the channel. So what I mean by that 
and I'll show I'll, I'll show the screen here again for a second. When I go to the compass for the server, we boosted our server to level two. So this is a significant boost in quality because what happens on Discord is you can have video and voice voice or sound channels both. So what we have, and I think we're the only game publisher, uh, at least a Consum war game publisher out there that's at level two. I don't know if anybody's at level one yet or not, but we're at level two. And what we can do with level two is we can do full high def, 1080p, 60, frame, 60 frames per second, uh, high def is what we're able to accomplish with this investment. And the reason we won't wanted to make that investment was really for you. We wanted for you to come to Discord and you can play literally any game from any publisher. So you name the publisher, you name the game. If you come to Compass's Discord channel and you go to our, uh, again, you just go to our HD channels, which I'll just scroll to in the bottom here. It's the very bottom. We have our HD video and voice channels in here. Uh, we've got various game rooms. You can come in here and you can meet people with high def video, which you can't do really, I don't think, on any other uh, game related Discord channels. I think we're the only ones that have it. And then the voice quality is very good. So we did that test run yesterday with Barlev. So definitely bring whatever game you want to play. We don't care if it's Compass or not. We want you to be able to come and enjoy a game, meet others in our community. We're, we're inching in on 200 already members, but we did invest in the platform because we really would like to have you uh, drop in and enjoy uh, the platform with us. So again, just want to uh, thank you all for joining us. We got a lot of activities going on at Compass for sure. Uh, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. Um, you know, everybody's safe and healthy. You're, we're getting in, closing in on the winter holidays here. So just a reminder again that the Conquistadors is now shipping. Stella Horizons is back in print shipping again. Obviously, in Attrition of Souls we talked about today. Hopefully, you'll pick up that game. A lot of information online available about it as well. Uh, you see the two new releases coming out um, in uh, January that we've announced as well. So you can see what's coming right around the corner, and we'll have a very busy uh, Q1 this year with a lot of game releases. So with that, I want to thank you all for joining us. We'll be back here next Thursday on December 10th with Bill Thomas. And then on December 17th, that is looking like it's going to be our year in review, our special year in review episode for Compass Games. So if you can join me on December 17th, that will be our special year end in review for Compass Games. So again, everybody, I uh, want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was a pleasure to uh, speak with you, and I hope you had a great time. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>